So you hear that garbage truck out there in the alley? That's my competitor, taking away all the good things that I could be finding. But today on Alley Picked, I want to talk to you about something that really annoys me. Fake wood. Fake wood, like on this Lifetime brand bench. I've had at least one or two slats break every year for the past four years. I'm going to show you how to permanently fix this problem. Oh, the solution? Real wood. Now, I'm not talking about plywood or press board. That stuff has its place. But what I'm talking about is composite wood or manufactured or engineered wood. It's this plastic looking stuff. Now, I'm not gonna give you a full review or critique of any one product. I'm just gonna give you a few of my personal examples of the stuff. Then, we'll get to fixing the bench. Within two years after I made this raised garden bed, I noticed that all the boards started to warp on all four sides. You can see them, they're actually curved. The color even faded, which isn't too bad. I could deal with the color fading, but the warping, even though it's still functional, it's not the best looking. Hey, let's go take a look at my neighbor's deck. You won't believe this. So part of the problem, I'm sure, is the construction of the deck. But I wanted to show you how bad it can look. It fades, it warps, and it even cracks and breaks. So, as I said, my exposure to this stuff has not been very good. Maybe they make it better nowadays, but the stuff that I've seen so far, I'm not impressed with. So check out this outdoor table that I made. It's not bad, it's functional. However, the top is curved. It works fine, but if you want something flat, this composite stuff is probably not the way to go. Let's get to fixing the bench. As you can see, the fake wood breaks and splits and stains. Here's one of the slats from the old table. You can see how thin it really is. No wonder why they break and it's not even real wood. So to replace these, what we're gonna do is use fence pickets. Now this is treated lumber. It's actually only 5 eighths of an inch thick, which is the same thickness as the old slats. So these should work perfect. Now, the only problem is when you buy these, they're often wet because they're stacked together. And so when you let these things dry out, they have a tendency to curl up. If you would lay these flat on the ground in the sun, you'd come back in a few hours and these things would look like the letter U. So I've got a solution for that. I cut these spacers from scrap wood. This is gonna allow air in between the slats so they can dry evenly. This step might seem a little unnecessary, but I guarantee if you buy these treated pickets and they're heavy and wet, they will start to curve and warp very dramatically as they dry. And it can happen within a few hours if it's sunny and warm. A few hours after I clamped this, I noticed that the two outside boards actually started to curve outward. So I went back and added some scrap pieces to the outside and reclamped. It's been three days since I clamped all the boards together. I want the wood to be as dry as possible. You see, I'm gonna be putting on this waterproofing stain and sealer, and I want it to soak in so it lasts as long as possible. How do you know when it's ready? Well, you can take a glass of water and pour it on the wood, and if it beads up, doesn't soak in at all, it's not ready. Let it dry, don't be in a hurry. It might take a week even, maybe two weeks, depending on the weather. You see, I don't want the wood to look like this in a couple years. So, the waterproof stain and sealer will keep it looking beautiful for years to come. So it's been about a week since I clamped the boards down. Here's two that I didn't clamp, and you can see they actually did warp quite a bit. The other thing I noticed is that the width, they actually shrunk about an eighth of an inch. So it's best if you wait as long as possible before using them on the bench. One of the challenges with using pickets are that the edges are not cut exactly straight. To straighten them, you can use a hand planer, or if you have a joiner, it'll make the job much easier. Here's an old belt-driven craftsman joiner that somebody gave me. It still works great. 
The way a joiner works is that the left side or the front, it's fixed. It doesn't move. The back side, however, the height is adjustable. I've got it set to about one eighth of an inch lower than the front side. When you feed the wood across the three blade cutting head, it cuts a perfectly straight edge. If the wood is really bad, it might take two or three passes, depending on how much you take off with each cut. Now that I've got one edge of the board cut perfectly straight, we're going to use that to butt up against the back so we can cut this to length. So now I've got a board straight on the back, straight on both sides, and now we can rip this to the right width. Before I start painting and cutting the holes, I'm going to do a test fit. The finish is going to look much better if I sand one side using 80 grit on a belt sander. A light sanding with 120 grit and to smooth out the edges a bit. Here you can see the difference between sanded and unsanded. Use a good quality wood stain sealer. I would not advise leaving the wood bare. Even though the wood is treated, I think it's going to look better stained and last longer, especially in the long run. I'll use one of the original slats to cut the holes. Since my wood slats are slightly wider and longer, I'm going to center the original slat onto my wood and hold it in place using a hand clamp. After drilling both holes, take the extra minute to seal inside the holes. It'll protect and look better. Here you can see the rust around the screw holes. I like to use this product called Osfo to treat the rust. It's really a rust killer. Amazing stuff. So I end this video at the same place I started, only I'm sitting at a much safer and sturdier bench. Now if you've got one of these and your slats are just fine, leave it alone. But if they do start to break, you might want to consider this method. Thanks for watching Alley Pick. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and click on that bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Until next time, I'll meet you in the alley.